Hey guys, today we are starting a series on oxygen. This episode is a brief introduction to oxygen cascade. As we go along, we will integrate knowledge of oxygen cascade with rational understanding of types of hypoxia and how we can wisely improve the prognostic outcomes. So stay tuned as we embark on the journey of oxygen. Let's begin then. Oxygen travels down from atmosphere to mitochondria along the pressure gradient in seven stages. From atmospheric air, oxygen moves into the airways until it reaches the alveoli, from where it is picked up by pulmonary capillaries lining the alveoli. From end capillaries, oxygen is pumped along the heart into arterial system, which ultimately carries the oxygen to target tissues. Ultimately, through the tissues, oxygen diffuses into cell cytoplasm and reaches the mitochondria or powerhouse of aerobic metabolism. The air we breathe is a mixture of gases containing 21% oxygen. As per Dalton's law, the total pressure of mixture of gases equals the sum of individual partial pressures. Right? So at sea level, where the total pressure of air is 760 millimeters of mercury, 21% of 760 millimeters of mercury will be contributed by oxygen, right? So partial pressure of oxygen in air would be barometric pressure into 0.21 or 21%. So 760 multiplied by 0.21 equals 159 millimeters of mercury pressure of oxygen in dry sea level air, right? Upon entering airways, the process of humidification starts. The saturated vapor pressure of water vapor at 37 degrees Celsius of body temperature is 47 millimeters of mercury. Water vapors would displace and reduce the pressures of all the gases contained in air mixture such that now the pressure of oxygen will be barometric pressure minus water vapor pressure multiplied by 0.21. So the pressure of oxygen in humid gases in airways falls to a new value of 149 millimeters of mercury in stage 2. In stage 3 of cascade, the humid warm air has now reached the alveoli. Here, further reduction in oxygen pressures occurs due to dilution by carbon dioxide already waiting in alveoli to be washed out in expiratory phase of breath. Which brings us to the alveolar gas equation. The equation is same as we used in stage 2 except this time carbon dioxide level has to be subtracted from the initial formula. So PaO2 with capital A pointing towards alveolar pressure of oxygen is barometric pressure minus water vapor pressure multiplied by 0.21 minus arterial carbon dioxide pressures divided by respiratory quotient. So 149 minus normal arterial carbon dioxide level of 40 divided by respiratory quotient of 0.8 in normal cases. So 149 minus 50 equals 99 millimeters of mercury. So you see how oxygen is traveling down the pressure gradient from 159 to 99 millimeters of mercury as it reaches the alveolar level. Under normal conditions, the end capillaries devoid of oxygen take up maximum oxygen such that the alveolar and arterial oxygen pressures equalize to 99 millimeters of mercury. We will discuss the role of transit time in more detail in future. From the pulmonary capillaries, the oxygenated blood travels through pulmonary veins and into the left side of the heart. But before reaching the arterial system, a fraction of shunted oxygen deprived blood mixes in, reducing the pressures of oxygen further. This is clinically judged by the famous AA gradient or the gradient of oxygen pressure between alveolar and arterial blood. Normal value is 7 in young and 14 in old. So 99 minus 7 equals 92 millimeters of mercury as new oxygen pressure in arteries. The arteries now shift the oxygen to the tissue level with regional variations between different tissues like brain, skin, muscles. But overall average oxygen pressure in tissues is taken to be around 30 to 50 millimeters of mercury. From the tissues, oxygen enters into the cells through diffusion into the cytoplasm and finally reaching the mitochondria where pressure of oxygen are around 1 to 10 millimeters of mercury. We will cover some important details on that in the future. Essentially, the oxygen cascade has two key processes that help transport oxygen from air to mitochondria. One, the mass convection process and two, diffusion. 
lungs with its robust ventilation is part of mass convection driving oxygen in but at alveolar level it's the diffusion that matters a lot further on mass convection through powerful cardiac output and pumping of heart drives oxygen throughout the body but at tissue level oxygen moves from arteries to tissues to mitochondria through diffusion what's even more vital is how hemoglobin oxygen dissociation curve plays central role in linking these processes we will cover that later this is it for today just an appetizer towards what we will be pursuing in coming episodes and integrating this knowledge for better patient care and outcome stay tuned see you next time